Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. Uh, I'm going to do a scene of a lake, and I figured with Father's Day coming up pretty soon, um, I would do something with this fisherman here. It's kind of going to be a kind of a s experiment here, this cracked earth stamp that I've done before, but I haven't done since, and what I want to do is oftentimes when you see, um, basically any type of water scene, um, often we're focusing on the surface of the water, and, uh, you know, if you go any where to a, a lake or whatever, you know, I mean, the surface isn't going to be opaque, it's going to be transparent for the most part. So, I've always wanted to try to capture that in scenic stamping by showing something that's under the surface, and uh, I thought I'd do it with this cracked earth, you know, as in different seasons as water um, evaporates and dries up a little bit, you know, around the uh, the bank of the uh, whatever pond or, or lake, um, you'll be able to see the uh, underneath. So this is the cracked earth stamp. Uh, it's often used in desert scenes and whatnot, but um, when I drew it, what I was looking at were wetlands, you know, where you have this uh, seasonal um, distribution of water, evaporation, and that being said, I, I want to use it here. Okay, that was the cracked or large stamp. This is a bottle green being used with the Lakeside Cove. smaller version, a uh, larger version could be used, and that was done in the bottle green, and I thought I would go for some variation, here's a little bit brown, these trees are somewhat distant, so I mean you wouldn't see a lot of variation in them at that kind of distance, but now uh, let's just see what it, see what it looks like. And for the water area, um, oh, by the way, these are Marvy brush markers, the uh, 1500 series. This is a manganese blue, could be any kind of lighter blue. Uh, the green that I just swiped on there was in basic number four, and this one was a uh, number 18 dark brown. Okay, I'm going to wipe off a little bit of this bottom portion of the stamp so that it transitions off nicely and does, I don't get a harsh line. I don't know if I would anyways because I used uh, the light blue down there anyways so it's not going to be a super dark line. But let's go for, yeah, let's just center it About like so. Give good pressure in the center. Okay. All right. We have this area off to the sides. Remember that scenic stamping. Um, you want to blend and overlap your imagery and in a very pure form of stamping, you know, rubber stamping, where we're talking about the repetition of imagery. You know, the very nature of being able to rubber stamp is being able to replicate. You can take the same stamp and use it again, overlap. All right. Now, as I'm coloring this stamp right here, I'm going to only use a certain portion of it, but um, I like to mention um, to be able to color more than you think you're going to need. That's about 
half an inch or so. I'm coloring more like an inch with this because I don't know. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Uh, don't ink up the wrong side of, of the stamp like I just did. I was looking at it like this and I was inking up this side, but it's really going to go like that. So yeah, you don't need to ink up the whole stamp like I just did, but anyways. Okay. And like I was saying, I inked up ink up more than you think you're going to need because you're not just going to use this tiny portion. Remember, you're going to overlap into that other impression, uh, the first impression of the cove. You can go higher or lower. If you go higher, it would look like something's receding a little bit. Um, if you go lower, it'll look like it's a little bit closer to you. Or you can just go, you know, line it all up. You don't need uh, stamp positioners or something like that. Just overlap an eighth to about a quarter inch into the previous impression, and you'll just be fine. Okay, so we have two stamps right here. Even small stamps can cover the entire area. If there was a cabin on there, I wouldn't necessarily stamp out two cabins, but for kind of more generic um, scenes like this, you know, where it doesn't matter if you see a repetition of the same image over and over again, it won't look like that, you know, especially if you overlap it, you won't get gaps in between. Okay, um, let's go for some additional foreground imagery. This is the grass texture. And I'll just put this right over the foreground, overlapping, changing the angle slightly. Okay, so what we've done is we've created kind of a shoreline over here. So as a viewer, we're not standing in water or something like that. We're kind of standing on the other bank. Um, Let's see. Uh, let's add in some clouds in the background. Um, this cloud can look very ominous and stormy if you stamp it darker, or it can look kind of, you know, real soft and billowy on a nice, pleasant day if you stamp it in lighter tones. If you're doing it in a sunset or something like that. Um, stamp it in a color that would be uh, kind of indicative of those um, colors of that time of day. You can just do it in reds or browns or pinks and oranges. Okay. Okay. So, uh, clouds up in the sky. If you want to, you can flip this around and go for. Um, I didn't bother re-inking it because I just want kind of a lighter impression down here. You know, a little bit of a mirrored type of effect. Um, let me go for a lighter blue here. That one was a light blue. This one's a salvia blue. And I'm going to take some of that ink off and just go for a lighter impression down here. Okay. Let's see, see, uh, some of those textures down here. You have soft billowy textures overlapping this kind of harder one. Okay. Let me try to zoom in here. It's always the danger of zooming in. I gotta have to I'm gonna have to remember to keep it in the field of view for you. Okay. I'm gonna add in some other foreground and I didn't forget the fisherman. Um, but I'm probably gonna do those in silhouette. So I don't want to uh, do this right now. I want to um, do my color application so that I can retain the nice crisp forms of this. In other words, I don't want to ink that down or stamp it down and start inking in here and, you know, kind of having some of it uh, blur on me which wouldn't necessarily happen, but in the course of doing a video like this, I don't have time to, you know, even, you know, three minutes to just do nothing and let it dry a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to do the background first. And, uh, video or not, that's what I tend to like to do anyways. Um, stamp out my darkest 
imagery uh, in the end. Now that's dark and this is dark too, but I needed a, a structure you know, to see where I'm going to uh, do my inking. Okay, let's start heading through a series of blue tones. This is a Adirondack Lights um, aqua color. Super light tone. Uh, sometimes when people get these pads, it's so light to begin with. Um, I've had comments that, oh, you know, my Adirondack Lights, you know, it's, it's dry, you know, nothing's coming out, you know, but no, that's just, it's the color, it's the value of blue. So believe me, they're not, uh, they're not dry. Okay, now you can see these cloud forms here, and I do want to retain the light uh, cloud, so I'm working my way around it. And I'm looking at the scene right here and where there's shadows down here. I'm just reiterating that with some additional tone in those shadows, in those shadow areas. Okay. And this grass down here will be kind of green but you can use blue on there because blue is a component of green, of course. Just add, you know, yellow tones to it or another green over it and it will blend in just fine. The Adirondack Lights blue um, is providing a nice surface uh, texture. It's real slippery and very light so that these other colors, this is a Marvy Salvia blue again, um, really glide along very nicely on it and I'm able to uh, manipulate the ink on the page without it leaving harsh kind of you know oval marks like that you know which is on this is of course just on you know plain copy paper but as it applies down here on a glossy paper that glossy surface plus the um, Adirondack lights on the uh, you know, the surface of the paper makes these other colors blend uh, very nicely. Okay, now I'm just going right over the top of the uh, cracked earth texture, of course, and that's starting to kind of blend it in. Okay, going on with a light blue Marvy pad, number 10 blue and applying it in the same areas as the previous colors, maybe using it um, a little bit more uh, whatever, judiciously, carefully. Uh, the dark you go, of course you don't want to have these big dark streaks in the lightest areas. So, um, actually the, the word I'm looking for is sparingly. Uh, use a little bit more sparingly. You know, when you get to your darker tones, now this is called light blue, but it's really kind of a medium tone blue. Um, yeah, just be careful not to uh, apply it too quickly. You know, when we're going with a you know, ocean aqua or aqua, Adirondack Lights. This is called Seashells, but they, you know, if you haven't watched the videos before, they changed the name. Now it's called Adirondack Lights Aqua. Uh, you know, I'm pulling that into the scene quickly, but when you get to the darker tones, remember to stay on the edge a lot more and don't take it in, otherwise you'll have this whole area covered in with, you know, whatever color you're, you happen to be using at that time. And you don't want it to be in here if you want that kind of emanating glow look. So, okay, so in other words, you can see how dark that is right there. Apply it down, and I'm using kind of a softer touch. I'm not pressing too much. I'm just kind of dabbing it and pulling it out slightly. I have a very light touch. Now, I mean, it's gonna depend on how wet your pads are too. Um, so you just have to kind of get a feel for it. 
Okay, so going in the corners like this. Um, I like to keep my pads kind of medium moist. I don't like it too wet, and no one really likes a dry pad, so. Um, now, it doesn't have to be Marvies. Could be, you know, any type of uh, water-based uh, dye pads if you're going to do this technique. Um, there's a lot of different brands out there, and for the most part, I think they're all pretty darn good. It just kind of comes down to uh, what kind of colors you want. Consistency matters. I mean, I don't want to go with five colors that are as slippery and thick as that um, Adirondack Lights Aqua, because by the time I get to this, you know, third or fourth layer, if you're using kind of slightly slower drying inks, thicker, that are perfect for kind of foundation colors, um, you want one that's going to, you know, go in, see now, I mean, I can touch this and this is not wet, I mean, this is this finger right here, see, I mean, it's, it's permeate, it's, you know, permeated the surface of the paper, so it's, it's perfect for that. It's moist, it's damp, and absorbent, um, but it's not coming off, but if I used five layers of that really thick ink, it would be so damp on here that when I'm trying to apply it, it's like applying wet into wet. And uh, I don't get a lot of coverage that way. I can't keep waiting for each layer to dry, so it's kind of good to go with a, um, a thick ink as a base and then work into kind of thinner, a thinner brand of inks. Okay. So I have a little spotlight area. If you watched that video, uh, I did this uh, thing called spotlighting, where you have kind of light coming from somewhere above and being let down here, especially when you have some kind of subject matter like that that we're going to be uh, using the scene. All right, um, it's starting to look like kind of a first light type of thing to me. Um, one right here. And this has been sitting around for a couple weeks, I think. But, I don't know. If you want to, you can keep these uh, in a uh, Ziploc bag or something like that. And see, I have this one's kind of blue, pinkish tone, green. And uh, this one's a little bit of a darker green. But I just kind of, I don't know, I kind of dedicate one tip for a certain family of colors and I don't know. Inevitably they all kind of become super dark and that's when I kind of clean them off a little bit more. But uh, you know it's a good way to do it if you uh, you know not worried about cleaning them or if you don't want to clean them every time you can just kind of dedicate a tip for a certain color. And the cleaning you know you can just dab it into a paper towel or something like that. You know, even if they're stained, uh, you probably won't need to worry about it. It won't, it shouldn't transfer onto a page. In other words, if I go with this green and I really clean it out, dab it off really well into a wet paper towel, or you can put them under the sink and just kind of dab them down, get that ink out. You can use a red on here or something like that and dab it down and it shouldn't like green should mix with it, you know, so sometimes they stain a little bit, but I won't transfer. Okay, now that was a light green, and the one before it was a yellow green. See this green right here? I'm going to put some of it onto these rocks over here. And, uh, kind of the distance, you can see what it looks like here, as opposed to without. It kind of puts a little bit of a warm glow onto it. Like maybe a little bit of moss on them. Okay, so 
it kind of warms it up a little bit and gives it a slight glow. I'll leave some of the rocks just, you know, as is. This area down here, I've kind of left a little bit of light, you know? If I don't, though, I mean, it's not any big deal, but those are little things that I kind of retain for uh, variation. And uh, in this case, it's variation in uh, uh, value. Okay. And, all right, let's see if we have some green going. Maybe I'll put a little slight bit of green in the water. Again, this is kind of working that surface. So say this, you can see the surface of the, uh, the water. And then you have the, uh, look at the clouds reflecting and you have that little bit of depth through the use of that uh, cracked earth. Okay, now let's uh, do something to um, add a little bit of variation into the scene. This is a uh, bubblegum pink and it's I think it looks like I re-inked it recently, so it's pretty juicy, but it's a it's a pretty light pink. I mean, it could be fairly bright, but you see if I knock it down like this a little bit, um, it'll remove some of that ink, and when I apply it to the scene, it won't have the same intensity. It'll be a slight bit, you know, uh, it won't be as bright. It'll be a little bit duller and lighter. Okay, so there's a little bit of uh, just variation in the uh, clouds up there. And you see this area down here where it might be reflecting, you know, there might be a reflection in the water. Um, of that color, I add some of it down here, okay, and it's almost, well it is, it's, it's dry brushing this color into the uh, scene. Okay, so you have that little bit of variation down there uh, for um, just a change in hue. Uh, to make it, uh, you know, one of the uh, uh, aspects of color is hue. You know, what color is it? You know, we're talking about value and uh, intensity here, but uh, that little bit of pink down there kind of really uh, adds a nice touch, I think. And have it just coming out in here. Have it blend into your blues. Don't blend it into the green, you know, pink overlapping green, but you can have it next to each other. Okay. So, um, let's start finishing up the composition here. And um, let's go with some of that foreground. Just thinking about adding in some cattails here on the shoreline. And let's see what colors I should use. Uh, here, let's go with the bottle green again. Uh, these are this cattails large. this in black and the, uh, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. The idea behind this is kind of having it in two different values in the foreground so you can kind of create a little bit of depth um, in the foreground itself by going with uh, two different values of something. Lighter uh, appears further back, darker appears closer. Okay. And let's see. I'm 
trying to think if I want to use it. I think I will go with some of these, um, this lily grass. I'm going to kind of, I want it a little bit more subtle though on the bottom. So I'm going to wipe off some of the ink off the bottom of the stamp. Okay. And put it there. Going for a double impression. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we're kind of working that depth, you know, it, uh, that subtle um, crack dirt large underneath there looks pretty good. And, okay, finally adding in the boating fisherman, or fisherman and boat, boating fisherman's a different stamp. Wiping off some of the bottom. You know where those little reflections are, and you know how to kind of position it somewhere. Kind of puts a uh, some guy fishing here. Maybe he's fishing the reeds here on the bank. Okay, and. Um, of course, it was just stamped in black, what I like to do, and what I would do um, a little bit later, uh, if I had the time, was I, I would wait till this these reeds dry a little bit, but I don't have that time here, so I'm just going to kind of um, tip the edges with the same black, and to kind of contain the composition a little bit more. Compositional containment. Uh, the sky. I was wondering if I would use it, and I think I will. Um, I'm going to use another foreground uh, element, but I'm going to do it in the sky here. Okay. All right. Let's see. Go for this overhanging branch. And this is a acrylic block using a unmounted die stamp. And let's ink this up. This is really going to uh, influence the composition pretty dramatically by having such a large object in the foreground sky, just like the uh, foreground on the bottom, just kind of containing things on the top a little bit more like that. It kind of puts us standing underneath the tree now, looking out into the uh, scene. Okay, and this is a tag and peel on this acrylic block. It just, everything sticks right down like that. You know, you can stamp it and it just peels right off. Okay. All right. Um, a uniball Signo white gel pen. I need some new blotter paper here. Um, anyways, we'll just have to, let me get in here a little bit more. Okay. And we've been working on the surface right here. We have a little bit of depth um, with use of a, kind of a sub surface mark of the cracked earth, and then we have layers of ink um, on here. Uh, transparent layers of ink. Transparent meaning you can see through them. Um, and those all kind of influence the end result. And 
This is a way to add some opaque marks to that surface, adding to the richness. Um, what these represent here in the water are those um, specular light in photography, um, light that's brighter than white. And in other words, there's some shimmer to it. In my darker areas, I don't put too much of it because you won't see kind of the little shimmering little reflections if no light is hitting in there. So what I do is I kind of concentrate it a little bit more in the lighter areas like I'm doing right here. But see, when I get out here, um, it's, more, it's a sp more sparse application. All right. So you can see that little shimmering light there down here. You see it in the back of that, how it kind of brings that out. All right, now see on these rocks over here. Um, I'll, let me do it on one side. I'll add some uh, highlights on the tops of some of these rocks. Okay. And hopefully it makes the rocks seem more dimensional by having kind of that reflected light on there, that, you know, bright, white, reflected light. Okay. So you can see I have added it on the top over here. And uh, I haven't done it on this side yet. You can see the difference between one side to the next. complete. Oops. There we go. Let me see if I can get in fairly close. There we go. So cracked earth, I mean, it's not something that you'd really think about, you know, in terms of a, a water scene, but uh, it can be kind of nice. I mean, without that in there, I mean, it would look okay, but I think it just adds to the richness of uh, something like that. All right. Um, you can add some dew or something on the foreground reeds where it gets kind of dark here in the corners. Don't add too many. I mean, it gets kind of dark down there, so you, know, you wouldn't see too many highlights or something like that on them, but... Um, yeah, just a few at a time and take a look, see if it looks you know, pleasing to the eye. Okay. You see it down here. There's little highlights on it. Some right here. Going up in there. That black is still a little bit um, wet. So when I put that little gel pen dot onto it, I can feel the uh, ink is kind of... Uh, you know, that black ink is kind of bleeding through it a little bit, which doesn't really bother me. I, I kind of like that it's a little bit more subtle, like down here. See how that white is much more white than that? Okay. Anyways, um, I think this scene could uh, benefit from a little bit of uh, background uh, effects using the uh, something like this. All right. I was going to say, but I, I won't do that in this video, but I can't stand it. Um, I'm going to add a little bit in there, like this, a little bit of mist on the side. I need to get a new uh, swab here, but okay, let me see if I can soften it up. And I'm just kind of create a little bit of diffusion. coming through the back of these trees. Giving it a little bit of a softer look. 
All right. Well, something like that. Mist on the lake. I want to do it right there too, around this um, boat. But I can see, you know, when I hold this up to the light, that that area in there is still wet. Um, maybe I can do it to the back where I can see it. There's little beads of black ink on there that are still wet, so if I dab into it, it might... Yeah, see, it's getting on the swab, and I, as I tap around, I don't want to get a bunch of black dots everywhere, so... Uh... Okay, I'm trying to work around it slightly. Okay, so you can see the bottom of this, uh, let's see, boat is a little bit more diffused, slightly. You can see it, especially in the back there. All right. Uh, don't have a title for this. Happy Father's Day card, I guess, or something like that. Um, lake surface, cracked earth, lakeside cove, a few stamps in the foreground, and uh, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and hope you enjoyed the uh, scene.